is just go over tools. Uh, every fly class I teach, every beginning class I teach, uh, this always comes up. Now you can get the majority of these tools in a fly tying kit. However, the majority of the fly tying kits you buy and take home aren't worth packing out of the store. The vices on them are horrible. If the jaws will not hold that vise or that hook tightly where it doesn't slip, you will hate fly tying. You'll never stay with it. Get the best vice you can afford. Now this was not my idea to do this show uh, like this, a tool show if you will. Uh, Susan Engel, an employee in here in the Lewiston Tribune, came up with the idea. So I told her, yeah, let me bounce it off some people and see what happens. So this is what we've come up with. The most important tool you will get is a vise. Now, most vices will look like this one that I'm holding here. This one happens to be a Thompson. Thompson is now out of business, but they still have uh, some knockoffs out there that do pretty well with it. You can see this is a table clamp. You put this underneath the table, screw it down, and there you are. Uh, it's at a 45 degree angle. A lot of people like to tie like that. Just get the best vise you can afford. Another one that you can get is a rotary vise. That one is true rotary, ball bearing. Uh, I use this quite a bit depending, I tie commercially, but depending on what fly I'm tying and depending on how many I have to tie. The one I will use the most often is this one. It's a stationary vise. Oh, it will rotate by stationary. That's not a good word. It's just not a true ball bearing vise like this one is. This one also will stand up. A lot of people like to tie at a 45 degree angle. I do not. I would rather keep it flat like that so I can look at it all the way around. If I want to flip it over and look at the bottom side or the back side, that's what I can do. First and foremost, get the best vise you can afford, whatever you do. Second most important thing you'll get are scissors. Scissors are, again, a little bit of an expensive thing. These happen to be an embroidery scissor. They're four inches long. Uh, get one edge that's serrated. You can see this one is a straight scissor. This one is curved. Uh, whatever you're used to using, I use a straight more than any. If I tie one particular fly, a mudder minnow, I use this curved scissor to trim the head. Oh, I can do it with the straight, but it's easier and quicker for me to do it with the curve. So whatever you get used to doing, just get a good pair, get one with a serrated edge. If you're going to a shop, a fly shop, and a sewing shop, whatever, and you're going to buy a pair of scissors, take it out of the package. Take the scissors out of the package. Cut with the tip of the scissor one hair at the very tip with those scissors. If they won't cut that tip, the blades are not aligned correctly. I don't care what the price is, you won't like them. Get another pair till you find one that will clip that tip. The second most important thing I would say would be the bobbin. This is just a standard little shorty bobbin, they call it. Uh, magnum bobbin, some people call them. Uh, I like the short ones like this because it fits in my hand right. Uh, there are longer ones, much, much longer ones out there. The most for me, now I know a lot of people, uh, it doesn't matter and they get along with them just fine. But for me, at the very tip of this bobbin, where the thread comes through the tube, there is a ceramic insert. I'll bet I have used this bobbin, oh, I'll bet for uh, close to 20 years, and I've yet to wear it out. A lot of times with just a metal tube, as you wrap, pretty soon that thread will start going to that same point on that metal tube, and it will eventually wear a small groove in that tube, it will start cutting the thread. This is another type of bobbin. This one has ceramic tube all the way through. Uh, I didn't buy this bobbin for a long time because I have a tendency to drop things. I could just see myself dropping this more expensive bobbin on the floor and breaking that metal tube or that ceramic tube and it's all done. This one also has, you can see the little wheel in here, you can adjust the tension on the uh, thread as it comes through. I see a lot of people, this one happens to be a, just a metal tube, one of my old ones, 
but I have a yarn in it, or I'll use it for floss. This one does not have the ceramic insert in it. I don't care because I'm not reefing on it or pulling on it that hard. Another thing that I see people do all the time is they're going to start using their bobbin. They put a new spool in or they have it tied for a while and the, it's hard to pull the thread out. It's too stiff. So the first thing they want to do is grab a hold of the feet of the bobbin and spread it apart, spring it out. That's the worst thing you can do because the next time you put a piece of th or a spool of thread in, it may be way too loose. If you're going to use this bobbin and it's too tight, just simply pop one foot off, take a piece of dry soap, bar soap, rub it in the hole, pop it back in, spin it a few times, and believe me, it will open right up. It will get very, very loose. Uh, scissors. I want to go back to scissors one more time. A lot of scissors that you get will come with a leather sleeve. Keep your scissors in that level uh, leather sleeve or some type of a protective sleeve. If they fall off the table, uh, it'll protect the points. That's all you need to do is drop that scissor off the table. I don't know what these scissors are. $25, $28, I'm guessing. This curved pair would be a little bit less. But if you can get a sleeve or, or make one to go on it, it's much better. I pinch the barbed on all of my personal flies. I don't do it on the commercial flies, but on the personal flies I do. If you're going to pinch the barbs, don't get just a pair of plain old needle nose pliers because most needle nose pliers are serrated up here on the tip. If you pinch a hook with that serrated tip, many times you'll break the hook. These are smooth jawed. Uh, I, I just looking here under these lights, they're not so smooth anymore. I've pinched so many barbs with them. But get a pair of smooth jawed pliers. Bodkins. Bodkins you can use to pick things out, um, to clean the, the, the glue out of the eye of the hook. This happens to be a commercial bobbin that I bought. They are dirt cheap. I don't remember what this is. Two or three dollars probably. The handle on this one is a little bit, uh, has some flat edges so that it will not roll off the table. This happens to be one that was made for me by a, a gentleman here in town, Bob Clark, who builds bamboo rods. He made a bamboo handle, put a little uh, eye ring on the tip so you can hang it if you want, puts a needle in the end. This is one that I made. I just took a piece of plain old rope, stuck a needle in it. I kept dipping that rope into varathane or varnish, I don't remember which, until it got nice and hard, works very well. This is a little bit fancy one. I took the tip off of a deer horn. Again, glue a needle in the tip, and there you are. You have a bodkin. I say clean the eye, uh, the glue out of the eye of the hook. I seldom use these bod bod bodkins, I can't even talk, to clean the eye of the hook. I will take an old scrap feather, pull some of the fibers off of the, of the uh, feather, run that stem through the eye, then pull the rest of the feather through the eye. It will take every bit of glue out of that. A lot of people like to use hackle pliers. I do not use hackle pliers all that often. On occasion, if I'm tying soft hackle flies or something with a short hackle, I will. This is a very large pair, quite old, uh, but they still hold very well. They're, they're just a plain old squeeze, open up the jaws, put the feather in, there you are. People say, I don't like these because they slip. Here's a little trick you can do. Take a piece of rubber insulation off of a, an old electrical cord, put it right down over that tube, that feather won't slip anymore. Here's one that already has the rubber in it. One side of it is rubber, the other side is brass. That will also hold very well. These are called teardrop, because uh, that's what they look like, I guess. I don't know. These also hold very well, quite well. But the one that I really use the most, I don't think it was even designed to be a pair of hackle pliers. Uh, it's an electrical connector. You clip this little insert that comes out the end along electrical wire. The back side here has a contact point. You check if there's current going through that. But this holds very well. Unless I'm tying very large soft hackle flies, then this does not work very well at all. So that's just a few of the basic tools. Believe me, you will get more stuff. Fly tires are collectors. I have stuff sitting at home that I have saw in a fly shop, in a magazine, 
wherever, and I think to myself, boy, that's going to make my time go that much quicker. Many of those items are sitting in the back of my desk collecting dust. Uh, but maybe some other person, a tire, is using that, and they love it. So these are things that I use myself. These are what works best for me. If you have something that is working better for you, stay with it. Whatever you do, stay with it. Just make your flies as easy to tie as you can, and these are a few of the tools that will come out and help you do that. Thank you.